Okay, let's now get back to work and finish our site. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to get rid of this because we don't actually need that. And we don't need this to handle that route. And now, uh, and I'll just actually also, I'm going to put this back to the way it was. So that should be all we need, so let me make sure everything's working okay. Looks good. Okay, so what we want to do here is we have the lucky number, but what we also need is a fortune. So here I'm going to say fortune equals and then I'm going to do what I often find to be very useful is invent something that I wish existed which is a function called get random fortune I wish that thing existed and I'm just going to pretend it exists for the moment and then I'll make a paragraph just like we did with the number. So paragraph is just going to enclose that uh, fortune inside of a HTML paragraph element. Then finally down here we are going to put all that stuff together. So I'm going to also once again I'm just going to make put the stuff on its own line. I'm going to say content. All the content is equal to this stuff plus the fortune and here we are just finally writing the content I just don't want any one line to get uh, go off the screen over here on the right because that's very annoying so this is all we need except for the fact that this magic function doesn't actually exist. So we have to define it ourselves. So let's do that. Get random fortune. So how can we do this? I'm going to start by just doing something to make sure everything else works fine and it does. Oh you know what also for I forget let's also um, uh, do the let's label this thing as a fortune so your fortune colon fortune and this will be fortune sentence how's that? good? okay now, how do we actually do this? So, a couple steps here. Number one, we're going to make a list and fill it with some potential fortunes, and we'll go back to that in a sec. Then we're going to write this out. Make list of possible fortunes. Step two, randomly select one of the fortunes. Then we'll return the one that we selected. So let's come back to this in a minute. Let's just um, put some things in here. So I came up with three fortunes after many hours of um, creative meditation. We've got number one. I see much code in your future. Yeah. Number two. Consider eating more fortune cookies. That one's always a classic. Number three. You have tamed the mighty python 
Now you must free it onto the great spider's web. Get it? Web? Python? Yeah. Good stuff. Now, we've got our fortunes, so we have to pick one. So this, this step here is actually two smaller steps. One, we're going to pick an index, either index 0, 1, or 2, and then we're just going to return the item at that index. And we know, of course, how to pick a random integer, because we already did that here. So index equals something. Actually, I'll come back to that and work backwards. Then we obviously, once we have the index, we're going to return fortunes at that index. So if I do this, we should see this first one every time, right? So let's test that. Perfect. Now instead of a zero, let's put a let's randomly choose a number. So that's random dot rand int zero through and then I can't remember if I believe actually this the API for this function is such that the second argument is inclusive. So if I put a two here, then we might actually get a two which is what we want. So if I put a three, that's bad because that's going to be too big. Let me test that. Seems like that happened. Seems like we got a three that first time. Where is this time? Good. Great. So we're getting a randomly chosen fortune on each time. So look Look at that, we're already most of the way there. I just want to add a couple other things. One, how about let's have a button here that you can click that says, give me another cookie, please. And then it's just going to refresh the page. But that sounds nice. So we just need, um, I'll call this, uh, an, uh, I'll just call it, Darn, names are so hard. I'm going to call this cookie again button. It's kind of long. That's fine. It's going to be a button. No, it's going to be a link. We'll start with a link. Then, then we can make it look like a button later. That's fine. It's going to be a link whose uh, reference hyperlink reference, so the link goes to the same page we're already on, which the word, uh, the, the, the period character is, is an alias for wherever you currently are. It's a good tip that works on the command line as well, so sometimes that's a very useful thing to know. And the text says, another cookie, please. Let's test that out. I'm going to add this to the bottom of my content. Looks like I got a problem. What did I do wrong here? Aha! You see the problem? I was so busy talking about this uh, period thing, I didn't notice uh, the quotes inside, quotes inside quotes. That's no good. So let's use different uh, single quotes here. Beautiful. And when I click this, we should see a refresh. Great. Now, I'm going to do a cool thing. We can actually put a button inside our link, and then our link is going to look like a button, which is going to be prettier. Look at that beautiful button. Last thing I want to do in the interest of prettiness is I think it'd be nice if we get a little bit of, um, if we de-emphasize the label a little bit and, and emphasize the content in each of these uh, uh, 
you know, things. So what I want to do here is let's break this into one more piece. So I'm going to say fortune. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Instead of this just being the fortune itself, it's also going to be wrapped. So I, I just want um, strong. I just want strong tags wrapping around the content of these things. So plus closing strong tag. Good. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Strong wrapped around my my number closing strong and remember this thing that we did how we had to cast this number as a string notice how you see what the problem is here if I do if I try to refresh the page now it's not I'm going to get that same casting problem. I'll show you here. And the reason why is I, I decided previously to cast, to do the casting down on this line. But now that I'm trying to uh, surround this thing with other strings or other content, I'm already concatenating it with strings. So it needs to be a string already at this point, so I'm going to do that earlier here. I'm going to do it here. Then I don't need to do it down here. Oops, this should be a parentheses. Now we should be good to go. But looks like I made a different mistake. Forgot the plus sign. Beautiful, look at that. So there you have it, a beautiful fortune cookie website. Um, I will, let's quickly go over uh, the code here, but so uh, let's see, let's start down here. So again, we're making an app object, which is an instance of, of this class, which is able to handle one route, the home page, going to this main handler class that we define up here. And in the definition of that class, we implement one method called get, meaning we can handle HTTP get requests. And in this method, we simply spend a long time building up a big string, culminates in this line here, and it all gets put together in one big string that we're calling content. And then we're just writing that content to the response that we're going to send back to the client or the browser. And in the process of building that string, we had to choose a random fortune to give the person. So we use this helper function, get random fortune, that I defined up here, which simply uh, declares a list of a few fortunes, just strings, and then randomly chooses one of, returns a randomly chosen selection from that list, which is accomplished simply by randomly choosing an integer for the index and then grabbing the item at that index.